Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Ah, Cisco allegedly is our guest tonight. Cisco is a uh, very nice young lad who was on the show about a year ago. Cisco came here at 830, I hear, to the studio, yes. right? Sent away. Anderson uh, told him to get out. <laughs> Anderson told him to go kill an hour. The show wasn't going to start for a little while. Well, he's killing an hour, all right. So hey. he probably went out and got something to eat. Now, I saw a stretch limo at the gas station on the corner. That wasn't him, Anderson? Hey, how'd you, you feel that, morning? Anderson? Is he uh, not driving a stretch limo? He's not driving a stretch limo. Yeah, but still. You see how that works? Yeah. All not right. only that, but did you, how do you feel this yeah. morning? Like fried hell. Me too. Drew and I... Uh, well, what was that? <laughs> Drew and I drove back from San Diego last night about uh, 12 a.m. And uh, I got in about 2 or so. Drew, you slept on the floor the entire way there. You weren't asleep? Hey, I ate three of those candy bars. <laughs> I noticed there were wrappers all over the place. I got the munchies, dude. Oh my god! Yeah, three the a super the family fun size Snicker bars. Yeah, yeah. Drew, I, I took a sleeping pill. Drew took a sleeping pill. You know what Drew's favorite fa favorite game is, by the way. Drew gives me he likes he, he gives me a sleeping pill, and then he he gives it to me, and as I'm swallowing it, he goes, "You're effed up, man," and I go. No, I haven't even swallowed. It's still in my mouth. It's still in my mouth, Drew. I'll spit it back at you. No, I can tell. And I'll go, well, how, how can you tell? I haven't even said anything yet. No, it shows. It shows. I think he gave me a sleeping pill last night at the radio station as we were walking out. By the time when we got to the parking, it's like, you're a mess. Maintain, You're dude. embarrassing me, man. Yes, <laughs> humiliating. Did you crap yourself? I mean, do I got to restrain you? Or are you okay? Did you sleep okay? And I'm always like... True, I'm telling you, these sleeping pills, they, I can feel them, but they, they ain't no big deal. I mean, uh, I was up for mm, a third of that limo ride, your pass up for. I ate three of those candy bars, immediately got the munchies, then I passed out, then I got up for a while. Then I drove myself home when we got back about 2, and when I, I got home about 2.30, I watched an hour's worth of TV when I got home. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't have, it, I don't get knocked down. You get knocked down, and you do transference. You're jacked up. And you're like, dude, you're buzzing so hard. I'm like, uh, I just took the pill, Drew. I haven't even swallowed it yet. All right. So uh, anyway, Drew and my, uh, I had to get up very early this morning. I know Drew did too, so our clocks are a little, uh, little screwed up oh tonight. Boy. That's all right. Who needs to know what day it is? Mark? Yes. You're 21? Yes, I am. What's up? Uh, basically, I've been uh, engaged for two, uh, actually I've been engaged about a year. I've been dating a girl for about two now. Uh, getting married next summer, and we've been sexually active now for a year. Uh, we were both virgins when we met, and my question is, I can get her to orgasm through oral sex, but not during Good times. Divorce. Yep, well, there you go. That would make her female. <laughs> That's it, brother. <laughs> I was just curious. Um, she's been on the pill, and I noticed that uh, she is, um, like, dead in senses in her chest whenever she's on that. Can that, is that... Could that be the cause for this? Wait, why you, didn't we just explain that that's the way most women are? That's just women are. I know, I understand, but I'd, I'd like for her to share the same, you know, pleasure that I have. You, you, she's not a male. <laughs> yeah, what do you want to do, grow a penis? <laughs> and then you'd be, then where would you be? You'd be married to a man. Yeah, that make you want. gay. Although you did make a point last night that that was rather, rather intriguing about women sort of things falling out. Well, this was at UC San Diego. Yeah. As women get older, stuff starts falling out of them. Yeah. Including the orgasms. Yeah. They, when you loosen up, as you get older, you loosen up. I mean, you become like a, a satchel with a hole in it. A fecal matter falls out, urine falls out, and for women, orgasms start to trickle out, too. They just orgasm more easily as they get older. Now, you, you got about another 30 years <laughs> on her, Mark. But you say you want her to experience the same thing you do, but she has an orgasm, and so do you. Yeah, but, I mean, she's not very keen to oral sex. Um, whoa, 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 what do you mean? She just uh, doesn't feel uh, right about it. Not really right about like, on a spiritual note or anything. Just kind of, it, it doesn't feel comfortable to her. All right, hold on, let me talk to my partner for a second. 
True. What are the chances she's faking it with the oral? Oh. You see, because Mark over here, he's putting the full court press on with the yeah. orgasm. You yeah. have an orgasm? Yeah. You have one yet, honey? Right. I want you to experience what I experienced. You right. have one? Right. And then she's like, eh, I don't like oral that much. Oop, had an orgasm. Uh, can we watch TV? And then he won't let go of that. She, yeah, I mean, she accidentally, because he wouldn't stop on it until he got to where she he needed to go. She ain't into that oral that much. Right? I don't necessarily believe. Maybe she's guilty, and they, they have Mark? a certain. Yeah. Why? Uh, why is she having the orgasm if she doesn't like the oral sex very much? Um, man, that that's clueless to me. I haven't been able to figure that one out either. Um, I mean, we we've gone as far as I mean, we've gotten like books and different things because I realize that we're both kind of. All right, where is she? Stance. Where is she in the lab now? Can you get her out of the vagina lab? Uh, no, actually, she's at she's at school right now. I see. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Uh, don't put so much pressure on her and her vagina. You well, know what I mean? mean uh, it, it, hey, listen, slow down there, buddy. You're getting books out. Yeah, this is the this is to satisfy your ego, not her. Yeah, they well, call. Well, I mean, she's she's you know becoming dissatisfied. You know, and I mean, it is a, a moment of pressure. I'm not trying to push it. I'm not. Well, we're having trouble believing that she's actually. Uh, we don't understand what the what the dissatisfaction is if she's having an orgasm. I mean, she wants. She she feels like she'll experience it better during sex. I mean, she feels uh -oh. like she's missing out on something. All right. And I believe me, I do. You know, I agree with the fact that it's possible that she's faking it during the oral thing mm -hmm. to kind of make Ooh. me feel better. But and that is why. You know, I'm kind of stressed about it. I mean, it's all right, all right. But listen, Mark. Yeah. Just let your relationship take a natural course. Don't stress. Don't stop focusing on sex so much. Certainly I not. Mean, so my much God, how orgasm. how insecure must you be? You know what I mean? You got to go out and get books. You got to you got to you, you obsessing about it, and you're freaking her out. Just relax. Have sex. Enjoy. Your intimate moments, if there's something she likes more than something else, that's what you do more of. What do you got to go? Get a, a schematic and tape it to her ass? Like a compass and a global sextant? Posi global positioning system. <laughs> got the GPS system up her ass. <laughs> you know, when you orgasm, you yell incoming. I mean, <laughs> outcoming. Just relax, buddy. Hey, you know, I, it, it, it's always funny to me when men's sexuality gets so wrapped up in their partners. It's like, you've got to have an orgasm or I'm not going to sleep. Right. Just relax. You, you start pressuring women, they freak out. He's freaking this chick out. She's young. She's like, ah, oh, F it, I'm faking it. Get this slob off me with his map. His, his map to my clitoris. Pat? Yeah, hi, guys. Was that a Hope and uh, Crosby film? Map Road to Clitoris, uh, I think is what right. it was. Yeah, Pat, you're 19. What's up? Yeah, I just want to say I love you guys and uh, apologize if I'm a little nervous. You guys are great. Thank you. Um, yeah, my problem is is uh, I've been with my girlfriend now for about six months. We've been sexually active for about three of those months. And in the last month or so, she's been starting to increasingly need us to role play, and which is fine. I'm all up for that. But she wants us to role play as animals really as, yeah like uh like lions and and she's not just like and we're not just like growling like it's like i'm the you know alpha male and i'm on the prowl for her but does she want you to dress up in a lion outfit like the cowardly lion from the wizard of oz or something well that's just freaky no no <laughs> sure what are you implying I'm well Ann, Ann and i were just having a discussion strangely enough just before the mice got hot right yeah about something called furries you hear about the people this? call furries. And yeah, they're actually I pick sexually... them out of my ass. <laughs> furries? Yeah. They're actually sexually aroused by half uh, animal, half people. Like and like they have like tails a centaur. And, um, no, more like more like uh, like there's a Disney movie called Robin Hood where the where the animals have human. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now but, my problem doesn't seem nearly as bad. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Well, but the point is, she's going down that road, and I really don't. I've never heard. Well, I've heard of it, but I've never really studied it, so I don't know what what the source of all that is well, well wait a second now we've we've all seen a girl on halloween dress up as a cat, tiger or cat, cat yeah. or something no, that that's good for up. a boner we're, no we're not, not dressing up not yet pat okay so it's just gr well, and it just, <laughs> hold yeah. on a second you know what i like about pat pat calls in and describes this sort of bizarre sexual problem and then as soon as you pick it up and run through it, it's like well 
All right. <laughs> uh, like, like, he, how he, weird he, of you to suggest yes, something like you're, bizarre? You're sitting in his attorney's office, and you guys are doing a deposition or something. It's like, like he didn't call the radio show and bring this up. Right. It, listen, if you guys are biting and growling and on the prowl, uh, her putting on some furry ears is not not too far out of the realm of possibility. Pat, yeah, I, was, I was just making a joke. I but, see there, buddy. Anyway, <laughs> failed attempt at once. Anyway, sorry. um. But it wasn't, at first it wasn't bothering me too bad, but then she wa we, we kind of both like wanted to try anal, and when I went to do that, her butthole was... Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I smelt that one coming yeah, on as soon as yeah. you said tried anal. Yeah, yeah. That was good. Right. A little more color to it than most of our bogus calls. Yeah. Be careful, man. If, if I get, I swear you got three male bogus calls, moratorium on men again tonight. That's it. Yeah. Screw walls. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah. I, they, hey, I wouldn't mind making Wednesday night's ladies' night here on Love Line. Man, you know, by the way, talking to the ladies. if they put women up to a screwball call, that's okay. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, that, that's, that's courageous, uh, creative, interesting, Wait, unusual. Let me tell you something. Puckish. I, I, I'm sorry, ladies, if this sounds like an insult, but you chicks can't pull off. A prank call. Mm. You really can't. Well, they don't. They are practiced at it. They don't spell it out. Unless they have like a sort of, of uh, Cyrano de Bergerac type hiding in the bushes feeding them lines. Of course. They haven't honed the jack-off skill that men have honed over the years. Every guy has that gene. I don't trust a guy who doesn't have that gene. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I do. I was speaking of jack-off and how screwed up men are. Yeah. Did, did, did you... I not hear you say one time that they, some group of women they were talking about... Uh, we were going through dumpsters and looking for, like, you know, buried treasure and stuff. And I thought, doesn't every man around the age of 14 go behind liquor stores and look for Playboys and things? Or was that the thing of the 70s? I, no, I, I, I don't know about 14, but I've done a ton of trash picking in my life. Looking for porn? I, I, I used to go, I mean, this was parent-approved parent yeah. behavior. We used to go trash picking on, you know, Wednesday night, whenever it was, just walk around up and down wow. the neighborhood, find toys, find junk, you know, syringes, tongue depressors, tampons, usable stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of uh, one man's uh, trash, another man's treasure. Oh, my parents were like, hey, knock yourself out. See what you can find. <laughs> yeah, I found a lot of pornography that way. There, there, there was sort of like uh, weather damaged you know, mag you know, you know what happens in magazines, especially big, thick ones like a penthouse. When you leave them outside, they spend a couple nights out in the mildew. In the dew, yeah, they get kind of smelly. They're kind of weird. Yeah, well, you know, good well, times. But I thought this, in the seventies, that was that was sort of a rite of passage for the adolescent male. Yeah, I don't think I think people burn their porn now. I don't think well, they throw the it away. What, think of what guys were, all, had to look for. It's like Playboy. Is yeah. it? Yeah, Steve. Mayonnaise. You put the master and masturbate. Thank you, buddy. Hey. You're, you're 16 there, Steve. What's up? Yeah, I've got a like a bad case of jock itch, and my girlfriend, I think, wanted to have sex on Saturday night. You sure that's what it is? Yeah, I'm a positive. Are you using anything for it? I'm putting some actin on it. Okay. Well. So I, but I don't know if it's going to be gone by then, and I wanted to know if I could transmit that to her somehow. Or yeah, 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 but... <sighs> what is that jock itch? It's, it's a fungus? It's a fungus. What's the best way to deal with it? Keep it dry? Dry, and there's tons of good over-the-counter stuff. Lamisil, Tanact, and that kind of thing. So, uh, I doubt you're going to pass it to her. Okay. Okay? So, uh, it's not one of the things you have to worry about. Uh, uh, let me ask you something about your nads, Drew. Is it sort of like this, like more stuff grows on the underside of a rock by a stream than the top of a rock in the desert? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so if you can keep your nuts dry... You're, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. Dump a little powder, ball powder. Ball down powder. There. I dump ball yeah, powder. Crawl is ball powder. Dump nice. that down there. You know, uh, just sort of uh, don't wear the tight slacks. Mm -hmm. Let things uh, flow in the breeze a little. Sometimes when I drive on the freeway, I hang my leg out the... Uh, put the car in cruise control, stick the leg out the window. You know, hang the sweatpants out, let the air come rushing up the leg. Really dries things out. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's good times. People think I'm signaling, though. Trip. Hey, what's up? Hey, you're 18. What's up? Yeah, okay. First, uh, you know what? I've got a question for you, and I want to do uh, an impersonation of a song for you. But the question is, basically, um, I believe that pot help, help, can help, well, help cure me of my uh, depression and uh, and semi-mental disorder, and I want to know what... Uh, 
Drew thought about that. Oh, bad times. <laughs> What's your mental disorder? Well, um, I have a mild case of OCD mm -hmm. and, uh, and paranoia and uh, just an itty-bitty case of, uh, of depression, and that's about it. All right. And uh, I just went through a breakup, so I'm kind of a little bit more depressed, so I'm using it a little bit more. Hey, is, this, is this something that was clinically observed? This is your own... Res um. No, 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 no. I've been, I've been on and off of, uh, of, of pills for about uh, three years. Yeah. Prozac, Paxil... Well, Tripp, uh, here's the, the bottom line. People use drugs because they work, because they make them feel better. Okay, if they didn't make you feel good, people would not goddamn use them. Ooh, true. Okay? okay, so to to say that hey, make my psychiatric symptoms get better, that uh, no s. Mm. That's why you use them. But the problem is, there's a whole series of things that get triggered as a result of these chemicals that make those things worse and or trigger separate disease. That's it. Period. All right. So maybe it makes you feel better for a while, but in the big picture, it may not be a good way well, to I medicate was yourself. That that maybe because I did for for my OCD, I don't have the, any of those, and uh, and it's my doctor says it's 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 a product of overactive brain, uh, a part of your brain that's over. Yes, and OCD gets worse with time with pot. All right. Well, let's. Okay. Sorry, listen. If it makes you feel better for now, uh, more power to you. But if these things didn't make people feel good, they wouldn't use them. Yeah. All right. Do you have some song or something, Trev? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Maybe it's because I'm a little stoned right now. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the trip's the name. Uh, okay, yeah. I wanted to do uh, a rendition of the Inspector Gadget song, okay? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh Let's God. talk about being baked. What, what, am I, what do I announce every, uh, at the top of every hour that I'm a big Inspector Gadget fan? Oh, my God. I've never seen that cartoon. How's that being tied into this show? Listen, all you guys who uh, sing songs to cartoons I've never he heard or seen, or like, let's say, for instance, you spin plates or something, don't call in. <laughs> hey, if you want to do a rendition of, uh, you know, he's got it all, the theme to Tabo too, that's something else. Clarissa? Yes. You're 26? Yes. Ooh, you, you're creepy, baby. Why? Something's up with you. What's going on? Well, um, I've been married for 10 years. Since I you were have two children. Since you were 16? Yes. Hang on a second. Can you paint a picture for me? How many teeth do you have, Clarissa? How many what? Teethus? Teeth. Children's. Oh, children's, yeah. How many children's? Two. Two children's? Children's. And, yes. and two teeth? No. Okay, you got all your teeth? Yes. All right. So what's going on? Well, um, I fall in love with my best friend, you know, a female. Mm -hmm. And I talk to my husband about it, you know, because I feel like I don't love him no more. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. What's he been doing to you? Mm, well. You been beating the crap out of you? Well, not beating the, you know, but it's like he kind of, um, he hurt me, you know, a lot emotionally. What'd he do? Uh, well, it's like in our sex relationship, he wanted to do all kinds of stuff to me and, you know, that things that I didn't like, you know. He was always, I mean, there for me, like, on with material things, you know, like, he'll pay bills and all that, you know, but he wasn't there for me, you know, like, emotional. when I needed him. No emotional. Yes, and with the kids either, you know. Mm. So... You know, all the love that I had for him, he kind of, like, he threw it, you know, to trash, you know. Hold on. 10-4, thank you. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Please, God, Christ. tell me she's not a policeman. <laughs> you know, well... Are, are, are you a, an officer? Yes. <gasps> really? Mm-hmm. You, you're not a meter maid? Security guard? No. You, you work for the Dallas Police Department? Well, I, I just skip that, you know. Are you, are you driving around a patrol car? No. You, where are you? At work. You you work like you do dispatch? Uh-huh. Okay. All, right. All right. Good times, good times. You don't carry a piece, though, right? No. Good, 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 good. All right, what's your husband do? Um, well, he works for this company. He's a, a driver. For a company. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, you're in love with somebody else? 
Yes. How about getting some counseling with your husband, staying committed to that relationship on behalf of the kids? Because maybe, maybe he's got some in him. He just doesn't know how to communicate it, doesn't know how to yeah, have a relationship. Yeah, the thing is that we always, you know, we have a great communication. You know, we you just told me he, uh, you had nothing. He gives you nothing emotionally. Yeah, but, you know, it's like we talk about the problems, and he always tells me he's going to change. He'll change for a week or two, and then he goes back to the same thing. And yeah, what is the same thing? Like, I just feel like I'm being just used, you know. It's like he just want to please himself, you know. Is he drinking, or...? He used to drink a lot, you know. Mm. He's kind of like stopping a little bit. By, you, by the way, hold on. That bing in the background, that means uh, officer down. Yeah. <laughs> That's the bing. They, they, that, that tone goes off when there's more than one officer down and uh, being pinned down by gunfire. <laughs> She's tying up the line. Hey, Clarissa, mm -hmm. uh, here's the deal, Mama. Mm -hmm. um, your, your kids. Your dad. Your dad, uh, jackass. Your father. Clarissa? Yes. Is your, is your father a jackass? No. He's a good man? Yeah. Well. Not exactly, well, huh? he, Yeah, my dad, he's great, you know. But yeah, I, now he is, but when you're growing up? What was that? No, maybe right, he is listen, now. We, got, we got to let her get back to her dispatching yeah. job. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Go to Al-Anon. Please, God, do not break this relationship. Do not act out on your girlfriend. Do not screw up these kids. Go to Al-Anon for a few weeks. Get a sponsor. See if your head doesn't clear up a little bit. And see if he doesn't come in a line. You'd be amazed the way these people change sometimes when their person they're connected with, when their spouse, their girlfriend, suddenly starts growing in the process of Al-Anon. Magically, they freak out a little bit and then want to change themselves. And couldn't she just take the kids and drop them off to a biker gang so they could get raised properly? I, I mean, at least so they'd have a shot. Didn't we decide raccoons, what we are going to use as our baseline? Yeah, I like to mix it up. All right. Maybe biker gypsies. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like someone is running uh, heroin into Mexico. Couldn't you just drop them off at that family so they could have a little more stable environment? Oh, Christ. All right, true. Yeah, you want to take a break? Cisco is uh, allegedly going to do the show tonight. Now, he did show up at 8.30, I'm told. And uh, Anderson sent him packing. Maybe I offended them or something. Could very well have offended What'd him. What'd you say to him? Him, get the f out of here! Oh, nice. Hey, you told him. You told him to go take a walk for an hour, right? Yeah, I said to go get something to eat. I said you don't want to stick around here for an hour and a half because it's boring. I mean, you can. You're more than welcome to. But I'd go get something to eat. Come back. Buy a quarter till. I see. Quarter, well, quarter maybe, eleven. Yeah, quarter maybe twelve. Quarter eleven. Yeah. Well, anyway, Cisco is uh, here in spirit, and uh, I wouldn't be lying to say he was in the building today. Not at all. So you know, Cisco on a technicality tonight, everybody. And uh, theoretically, he'll be wandering in here soon. If not, then you got us after this. Yeah. All right. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That'd be Dr. Drew over there. Cisco was supposed to come in here again tonight. He came in earlier. What are you, 8.30. What are you belching up there? Peanut butter. Oh, good nice. times. Good times. And uh, Anderson told me better go uh, drive around the block for a while because nothing was going to be going on here for another hour or so. And uh, maybe he just went out, went out and got loaded or he just kept going. Got offended and went home. No, well, whatever. Listen, I, I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. A lot of folks get angry at guests that don't show up. Not me. More airtime for me. <laughs> That's the way I look you at it. You get angry when guests don't show up on time, though. I don't want to... Well, no, not on this show. Yes, you do. You make you crap about that all the time. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I admit when I'm wrong. Not on this show. How dare you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Me, yeah, all the time. Well, I was thinking of when we used to do the TV show and we had to wait for a guest. Oh, remember Pamela Lee? Oh, that... Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you, Pamela Lee... Pamela Lee shows up late everywhere she goes, and her goddamn publicist, who is that? Yeah. Was that yours? Yeah. And who? Israel. And Omar Lee, uh, yeah. bloodsucker? No, no, come on. Come on. So, they are. So Listen, I nice told thing. her, go talk to your client. Tell her to start showing up on time. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. And what'd she say? Oh, that's not my job. Like, well, whose job is it, honey? And then we started the show, and then we had to stop the show. Oh, 
Oh. I remember a lecture you gave the entire, the entire studio, which was, you're enabling this person. You're the problem. Just start broadcasting. Well, let, let, me, let me tell you the beauty of television, everybody. If a Pam Anderson makes you wait an hour to do your show and cost you thousands of dollars, literally, people standing around, you can't say anything about it because you'll offend her. And my thing is like, what do you mean offend her? It's like you d met someone for dinner at 8 and they showed up at 9, yeah. but you can't say anything about them being late or they'll get up and leave. What the hell is that? It's ridiculous. They'll never go out with you again. That's, oh, that's, that's yeah, that's game. what it is. Yeah. No, their friends won't go out with you either right. because their publicists <laughs> handle other people. Oh, you horrible, horrible publicists. Please, please do something with your lives. Please, you vermin. Please. Sandra? Yeah. Oh, publicist. Two grand. Fifteen hundred. Two grand a month. That's what these publicists want. Oh. Go ahead, Sandra. Don't, I'm, don't get me going on these people. <laughs> You're 41. What's up? Yeah, I got a question about a sexual life here. My husband and I have been married for 20 years. Um, he's been having trouble getting it up. So do, do, Does he do drugs? No. Does he on medication? No. He drinks, though, doesn't he? Occasionally. How often? Um, you know, twice a month. How about cigarettes? No. Well, he, he needs to see a doctor. Because in that age group, if he's really, truly having erectile dysfunction, more than anything, medical causes need to be ruled out quickly. Okay. How old is he? He's 40. Hmm. Yeah. Most men, when they have that problem, are running to the doctor. So what's up with him that he's not sort of concerned about this? Mm, oh, yes. Uh, oh, know. yes? <laughs> really? Well, There's guys who can be freaked out about that. And not go? Yeah. Sure. Why, why is, doesn't he seem... Is he concerned about it? Um, doesn't seem to be. See, that's not right. Uh, nope. he'll, he'll be hard at first, but then he gets soft. Ooh, that's a little different. That's different. What's up with that, Drew? Drew, Drew has a puss on, Sandra. That's not a good puss. What's going on in your relationship? Uh, well, I recently got a new job three months ago, and I'm working nights, and he's, he's working days, so we see each other on the weekend. Yeah. But, is that too much for him? Have you noticed uh, anything else going on? No. Anything? Any, has he complained about anything or let you know anything at all about how he's feeling? No, and he's always been real sexually active, you know, he's... Yeah, he's uh, humped the bejesus out of you in the past. <laughs> Anything yeah. change in you anatomically or? No. You uh, put on a few pounds? Well, <laughs> and then, yeah, well, I could lose a few pounds. Uh, did you did you pack some on? No. No, about the same. What what are you weighing in at? Uh, one sixty. All right, not bad. Four foot even. Pardon me. Okay. <sighs> What do no. you do about this? Is this a medical problem when you lose it? Well, it's a little more likely to be emotional if he's got good erectile function that suddenly goes away. Yeah. Uh, but he still should have a medical evaluation. He, um, I eh, get him in a medical evaluation. Oh, of course. Then. Ab that's where you start. How and about then, you get the wood, then you uh, just turn one of those twist ties around the base? Well, look, there's Viagra now if he really has a problem. But I, I, it's a little peculiar that he's not, uh, not interested in it, not, not disturbed by that. Well, you know, guys, they've been married for 20 years. They could care less. No, no, I disagree with you. You don't? No. Yeah. I think you're, you're, the whole, Adam, I know your concept of marriage is a little screwed up, but at what? 20 years, you should still be uh, enjoying yourself. Sexually? If, yes. Same vagina? Different jizz. <laughs> Josh? Yeah? You're uh, 13? Yes, I am. There you go, buddy. What's up? How are you guys doing? Good. All right, first, I just want to say I'm sorry about last night. I was the anonymous caller. Oh, that we accidentally hung up on or something? Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, Adam, you're my hero. Thank you. And Dr. Drew, if I become a doctor, it's your influence. Great, Josh. What's going on? All right. Ever since I can remember, my uncle has been, like, raping me and stuff. Like since you were a little boy? Yeah. Great. Were, who, were, uh, how, how would you come in contact with this uncle? And who's, whose brother is he? 
Or is he? Uh, I have no idea. I've been. I lived with a foster family when till I was three. Oh boy. And then when I was three, I guess I got adopted by them. By this guy who calls himself your uncle. Yeah, I don't know if he really is. Well, well wait a second. You weren't adopted by him. Mm-hmm. You're you're adopted by a family who has him around and calls him an uncle. I I just don't know if he. I don't know if he's my biological. Uncle. Yeah, but is he the guy that adopted you? Yeah, very adopted. Oh my God, you you you've got to call. You've got to you've got to report this, Josh. This is just awful. Is is, is it? Has he stopped? No. When's the last time he did this? Uh, one to two weeks. Mm. Wh- why do you think he hasn't done it in a few weeks? I don't know. He's drunk a lot. So. Mm. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, sort of. Josh, I want you to write this phone number down, okay? All right. You, you got a pen? Uh, yeah, let me get a pen. All right. One eight hundred. Yeah. Five four zero. Five four zero. Four thousand. Four thousand. Also eight hundred. Hundred. Four two two. Four four five three. Four, four, five, three. Yeah, you, you got to spend a little time talking to these folks about how how you manage this situation because this is terribly destructive to you. Hey, uh, read those two numbers back. One eight hundred five four zero four thousand. That's one of them. And the other. One eight hundred four two two. What's the first number again? The yeah. last. Pardon. Four four five three. Four four five three. Are you in school right now? No. How come? Um, oh, what do you mean right now? I, I mean, do you, not right this second, but are you going to school? Uh huh. Okay. Everything going okay there? Yeah. Did you write those numbers down? Yeah. The last one's four two two. Four three four four. Four four five. But hey, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hold on a second there. You got yourself a pen, do you? Mm-hmm. You can write numbers, right? Yeah. Did you write those numbers down? I I can't get, like, the second number. I can't remember it. 422. Two, write that down. 422. Well, you don't have to remember it. You write it down. All right. It's, like, pitch black. All right. Uh, say that again. 422. 422. 4453. 4453. There we go. All right. Okay, you got that down? Got it. I know, you got to call them in the morning. Or even now. you got to spend a little time talking well, about I, this. And where's your where's your uncle now? Is he in the next room? Um, no. Uh, last time I saw him, it was this morning. So I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Before I went. So you got to call that those numbers, and you got to tell them what's going on. All right? All right. And, uh, you know, Josh, you, mm-hmm. you sound all right. I mean, for someone who's been through what you've been through. It's not your fault, and you got to get some help now. I'm sorry for what's happened to you. And you, the first step to getting help is calling those numbers. Mm-hmm. What are those numbers? What? Is that the track? <laughs> no one is. What ch- number is that? Uh, Child Abuse Hotline and Child Help USA. That's right. Those are very important numbers. You have to call. Mm. That that's all you have to do right now. You just have to call those numbers. And start talking. Tell them what's going on and. Uh, Get the gears turning. Just like you talked to us. That's right. All right. You tell them Drew sent you, you get a 10% discount, Let's right? Talk to Randy. Who? Randy. Who's Randy? I'm on six. Oh. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I said, well, I was saying you call them, you call them, and you go. You said talk to Randy. I said, let's talk to Randy. Okay, buddy. I was talking about calling someone, I so I thought you had someone you knew over there. Ironic if their name was Randy. Randy? Yeah, hi. 23? Uh, yep. Yeah. Folks named you Randy, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Uh, are they some kind of uh, comedians? Randy, R-A-N-D-Y. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't see it so unusual. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> anyway, I have a question. Um, you risk going gay. Uh, What's up? Hmm? Uh, I have a question, actually. I have uh, a girlfriend for about... Jesus Christ, Anderson just laughed. <laughs> I was just, like, startling. Like, my God, he's over there smiling at what you said, Adam. <laughs> I think he's sad on a feather. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Randy. What's that? Go ahead. Uh, no problem. Um, I have a girlfriend for about three years, and uh, for three years, I would say it's just some complete compulsive sexaholic. I have to have sex every time we meet, mm-hmm. and I think it's causing a problem. 
because, you know, I would come over to her dorm, even for example, and she's there studying, and honestly, no, my mind is just having sex with her. Well, that would be normal kind of male behavior, right? Yeah, yeah but it's, uh, I think it's actually causing a problem, being that I feel like sometimes she does it just because she knows I want to. Yeah. Yeah. That's what women, so unfortunately, end up doing a lot of the time. Yeah, but I mean, I don't want it to get to the point where it's not... Hey, listen, most women are willing to do that to sort of meet you on your turf if you provide them what they need in the relationship. That's right. So you got to talk. you got to spend time just listening. you have sex with them. you got to go to their friend's you've party. you got to reach her on an emotional level. you got to show affection. you got to do all those things. Right. And then the, the sexual peace will follow. They give you sex. You pretend to listen. They give you sex. You go to the mall. They give you sex. You go to their friend's house. They give you sex. What's the matter, Ann? You pretend to like yeah. their friends. No, I understand what you guys are saying, but it's just, I mean... I feel like I'm the only. I have a lot of friends, and they can actually go hang out and just you know have a great time without. Maybe you know they'll leave. All it right. Well, maybe are, you think you're bisexual. No, I'm not. He's very passionate, though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Don't get her pregnant and, uh, and start uh, smoking some weed or something. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, just just uh, don't preoccupy. Do you exercise? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I know it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't see this as a huge problem. Agreed. I'll whack off before you before you head over there. You know what's funny about women? Mm. I don't know if it's this way with uh, you and your wife. But every girlfriend I've ever had, it's real important that I like their friends, and I rarely do. Yeah. It's important to her. It's important to whoever I'm with that I like their friends, even yeah. though I never really see them. It's yeah. more of a point they make. Yeah. And I always screw up and go like, yeah, it's all right. Wouldn't want to spend any time with them. You know, it's like, oh, oh, no. Now I'm screwed. Yeah. It's never been important to me that my girlfriend like my friends. Oh, because, because, I want because them, that'd be impossible. I want them to get along. I don't want them to fight or anything, but I don't really care what their opinion is of them. You hang around a bunch of hyenas. I mean, that's, how, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking it would, about? It would worry me. If it's almost an acid test in your case. If we all liked your friends, I'm like, whoa, whoa. With her. You know, like I've never, I get, I've gotten busted by girlfriends a thousand times on like they're like, you barely said hi to Sheila. <laughs> I'm like, I said hi, yeah, just hi. I don't know what else to say. She's my best friend. I said hi to her. Yeah, you just said hi, and then you walked into the kitchen. Like, I, I don't know. What do you want me to do? Well, you know, it is my best friend. <laughs> like, all right, I'm sorry. Next time we're going on a cruise. I've never said that to a girl. I've said, you, you barely said hi to Ray. Ray's hurt. <laughs> it's like, I, what is that? Is that a chick thing? Oh, it, it is, is isn't of it? Course, of you don't have, you don't care, right? No. I mean, if your wife walked past uh, Dr. Marcel and just said, hey, uh, how's it going, Marcel, and just kept going in the kitchen, you wouldn't like pull her aside and go, what was that? No. Marcel's one of my closest friends. No. You, just, you wouldn't I, care, I think, would I think you? Girls need to have, I think, their esteem. It needs to be reflected in how their friends feel about their partners. Oh. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. See, our friends need to think our girlfriends are hot, but they don't need to like them. They, they, I, I think it's ultimately, Ooh. no, 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 it's even more yeah. than that. No, no, Adam, because even when huh? you, you, you sort of achieve uh -huh. success with a guy, your guy friends, when they think your, your partner is hot and a pain in the ass. That's, that's the target. That's the. Really? Why the pain in the ass? Have you, You're uh, just covering yourself for your pain in the ass wife. <laughs> what are you kidding? No, not pain in the ass. Here's the measure of a guy. A guy, you want your buddies to think your wife or your girlfriend or your partner yes. is attractive. And that's it. You don't really care if she think, they think she's the greatest thing ever. You want to think most yeah, she's, guys, listen, she's nice and she's good looking. Most male friends do look at their girlfriends as a pain in the ass because it takes the, the guy away from his little pack. Mm -hmm. And they're jealous. They don't like that. They, they all get that way. They all get a little bit sort of testy about the girlfriends. Oh, yeah. All right. Especially when you got the real McCoy there, Andrew. All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. Uh, Cisco, I'm sure, is uh, listening now and on his way to the radio stage for the second time uh, this evening. Anderson will, won't soon live this one down. He sent Cisco away at 830. We'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be back. This is Pam Lee, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. There's our girl. Female, female impersonator, Drew calls her. That is what she is. Smartest thing Drew's ever said. I always, uh, I always, uh, I give you credit for that one. Yeah. I, uh, I really think that was a, uh, a rare glim glimpse of wisdom, Drew, from you. Uh, and there's women that do that. A lot of women do that. 
female the, female the, impersonators right. adorn themselves with the trappings of female yeah as a way of fetishizing their bodies yeah and does that to me yeah 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 she's got those uh sexy sweatpants and mucklocks she wears every night with uh, uh hey, hey. <laughs> i mean you're beautiful the way you are baby producer and don't need to get all dolled up look like a not like that or yeah. not like that I mean, she does she does the the hair color and the great haircuts and stuff. Yeah, but all women do that. Just about all women do that. Yeah, she does that right, though. You know what I mean? I mean, some women did overdo it or female, underdo it. That's female No, that's what I'm saying. Anna does not do that. I'm, I'm, I was oh. being facetious when I said that. All right, buddy. Got the Riddler over here tonight. All right, relax. <laughs> I saw a chick today wearing the flannel shirt and the trucker's vest with the sort of mullet haircut. Nice. And I always think, I think to myself, even if you're a dyke, and I don't even think this woman was, what's in it for you as a woman to dress like a man? You know, you know what I mean? Socially. What does that get you? What is that good for? She's wearing like the clod stomper boots and the trucker's vest. And I was just looking at her. She was on the uh, lot today when I was walking around. I just thought she was young, you know, 24, 25. Wasn't, a, ex was, wasn't an unattractive woman. But you I know, think, what is in it for you, honey? I want to like go, dress up, go to her and I go, honey, you don't see me wearing a uh, smart blouse skirt combo <laughs> and some pumps, you know? Don't dress like a guy. Why yeah, do you do you, it? You know it's acting out. I know. Give me name that past history. All right, I'm going to get into it. David, Dad, Dad whacked her a few yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Hello. Yeah, David. You're 14. What's up? Yeah, I was riding in the marathon with my brother, and I had to stop at 12 miles. The uh, L.A. marathon. Yeah. And you were riding a bicycle. Yeah. Why'd you stop? Because my groins were hurting. They're like my legs were hurting real bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you ride your bike in that? What? What? what I didn't know you could. Well, they start you off like kind of like sooner before the people run. Oh. I see. You know what do they have now in that marathon? They got running. They got walking. They got wheelchair. bikes. They got wheelchair. What are they going to open up to land yachts and snowmobiles? They have like skateboarding too. They have all kinds, all kinds of stuff. I don't know. To me, it kind of ruins it. To me, a marathon was you ran twenty six point four miles or whatever it was, and that was it. They got some guy going by in a wheelchair, another guy on a bike. All right, so anyway, your nads started hurting? Yeah, and now I can't get an erection. So huh. Nothing. Well, did you, did you feel, notice any numbness or anything like that? Uh, yeah, when I got off my bike, my legs hurt. What, what was with your bike seat? Was it real firm, real just, hard? Just a post. Yeah, just yeah. a post? <laughs> no. Well, you can, you can damage or... Yeah, damage the pudendal nerve, which is the nerve that supplies nerve input to the penis. And uh, bicycle, bicycle injuries are very common way for that to happen. So it usually it, re it recurs in a few, it, it repairs itself in a few weeks spontaneously. So this should come back in a couple of weeks. Now, what if he pedaled backwards? Could he reverse the damage? No, afraid not. Hmm. Fascinating. Michelle? Yeah? You're 17? Uh-huh. What's up? Um, well, I was wondering, because me and my mom, we haven't gotten along for, like, the longest time since I can remember. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand why or anything. Yeah. Hmm. Where's your dad? He's here. How do you get along with him? Yeah, I get along with him fine. Do you tell him about feeling picked on? Oh, he knows about it. He, like, used to cover up for me and stuff. Then, like, my mom would just yell at me about it later. What does your mom say about this special relationship? Oh, no, she said I'm a daddy's girl. So he's, she's jealous? I don't know. She, like, she favors my brother and my sisters. Huh. Yeah, but every kid thinks that. No, I mean, she seriously does. She, like, I, when I was little and stuff, she used to always make me, when I'd go sit in the living room to um, sit and watch TV or something, she'd make me go to my room. And I wasn't allowed out to watch TV with any of them or anything. Yeah, but, I, you know, I bet if we talked to your brothers and your sisters, they'd say they were the ones that were singled out. No. Or, or that was only after you smacked one of your sisters, and that was the routine sort of... All right, punishment so, for for that kind of behavior. Well, listen, let's not drop it all in Michelle's lap, even though that's what I started doing. Hey, Michelle, uh -huh. why don't you talk to your dad since you get along with a guy and yeah. sort of plead with him about your mom? Uh -huh. and, and but you got to make it clear to the, your parents that you really, you're not just kidding about feeling picked on. You truly, deeply feel like there's something wrong here. Yeah. Now, whether or not there is or not is sort of not what's important. What's important is you have this feeling, and they owe it to you to address it. Yeah. Let me tell you what goes on. I noticed it. I did it myself growing up. So did my sister. Basically, your parents fail you growing up.
for a while, and then the rest, it's done. You shut down. You stop talking to them. And you misinterpret everything. Yeah. My sister hated my dad's guts. No matter what he did. Oh, my sister was, uh, you know, 31. And my dad would say, uh, hey, how, about, uh, how about we get together for dinner? And then, uh, you, you know, I, and, and I'd talk to him and he'd say, yeah, yeah, she didn't want to go. And then uh, I'd talk to her and she'd be like, he canceled. How dare he? Yeah. And I realized it, once, once you get it going, you get it going. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went on for 20 years. You know, I mean, you know, my parents were sort of done screwing us up by the time we were 12. We just, you know, we took over from there. Kept it going. You've done a good job, by the way. I want Thank to, you. I want to commend you. Yes. Yeah. Kept keep, it going. Keep, keep that flag alive. Thank you. Yeah, it's like the eternal flag. Carrying flame. that torch, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, who says I don't have follow-through? <laughs> Let's go to break. <laughs> All right. We'll be back. Yep. Love line. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Well, Cisco was supposed to come in tonight, and uh, he well, did. We did, yeah. Yeah, hey, he came in. We should have... Hey, Anderson, next time a guy comes in an hour and a half early, record him. <laughs> Put him on the air. I came in at 8 o'clock. Anderson uh, told him he was uh, way early, and he should uh, go out and get a bite or something and come back later. And uh, that was uh, two days ago, so we haven't seen him. I hope he's all right. And uh, I don't know. Maybe some confusion. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll uh, go on with the calls, and uh, if he does show up... <laughs> You show up. I'm going to stay here until 1230 in case he comes along. Nice. Robert? Yes. You're 19. Yes. What's up? Uh, I've been with a relationship with a, my girlfriend for about a year, and um, uh, we, I thought we had a pretty good relationship, but uh, she, uh, um, she kind of caught me, you know, basically masturbating. Basically. And she mm -hmm. thinks that, that that was really, really weird. And, um... It depends on what you're doing. I beg your pardon? What were you doing? I, I was masturbating at a time when we, you know, when we weren't having sex. How did, how did, this, can you just... See, so you weren't actually in her at the time? <laughs> no, no, I mean, so you, you know... write that she, down, that's important. She just kind of walked in. I see. In your bedroom, or...? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have sex fairly often. Until then, that has happened, and... She doesn't like having sex as often as I'd like to, so oh, yeah. periodically I do that. And, I see, and but she really uh, comes off making that sound like it's really weird. Hey, Robert, let me ask you a couple quick questions. You two live okay. together? Uh, yes. You do live together? Yes, for I about see. a year. For about a year? Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, what is she good for a week, sexually? Oh, once a week. Once a week, and that's that's yeah. not enough for you. And you've told her that's not enough. Well, she gets the idea. I mean, she, okay. you know, I, I get to told no sometimes, or it's not the right time. But I mean, w weren't you scared? Yeah. Did it was there a part of you that wanted her to catch you masturbating to sort of send a message to her? Oh, uh, absolutely not. No. 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 Well, how did she catch you? Oh, just because I didn't. I was I was in the bedroom and I didn't realize she was on her way. You know, home and just. Walked in, you know. Just Don't go down that path. Okay. But I always wonder with people, it's like, you're at home, you're in the bedroom, someone walks through the front door, you know, and locks the door, throws the keys and the purse down. How do you not pull it together before they come into the bedroom, you know? Uh, well, I, like I said, I, did, I didn't hear her come in, and I was in the bedroom, and I've done it before. All I right. told her that. All right. I, All right. Well, listen, it, it, she's freaked out about this, and I'm guessing she's this is kind of connected to her being freaked out about sex in general. You got to tell her to relax. Here's the reality. All men will masturbate. You can play a tape recording of this for her. All men will masturbate even when they're having regular sex. Yeah. She doesn't believe that. And that, I've, I've, I've tried to explain that. Uh, uh, that's but. true. And if a guy is asking you to keep up with his needs and you, that's not consistent with what you want to do, then he, he has to. Then if he doesn't masturbate, you got a problem. Yeah, that's, and that's and a mandate lay, you got to lay off guys when they just are taking care of themselves in order to sort of match up the sexual needs of, of their partner. I, I'll tell you, she should she should, she should be, be thankful. Happy. Yeah, she <laughs> should be. Hey, good. You're you're you know, you're not bugging me. You know, you're, you're trying to be respectful of what my rhythm is. And, yeah. Uh, 
That's that. Please uh, stop wiping yourself with my stuffed animals. But and my pillow. Uh, other than that, I have no real problem with it. And, you know, of course, you know, some people would just probably ought to go do something else with somebody else, too. So yeah, Absolutely. Big men do that. Sure. And so I don't, yeah. I don't no, they do. Men do that. No, she I doesn't know. believe me. So I wonder how I could find that out if there's a... Uh, uh, you know, do, uh, some, right. some documentation or some uh, articles. That yes, the documentation is we hear about this every night. So tell to listen to the show. You'll be, a car will come through eventually. No, listen. Yeah, we're R- listen freak out R- hold on, this. Robert. This okay. is not uh, inherit the wind for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's a court movie, well, you right? Just yeah. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. To- yeah, you don't have to show up with your legal team and win a court battle with her. No, you, you know no. this is not what it's about. You just have to sit down and talk to her, and and listen. She's got some issues. Oh yes, she got some energy. When women, you show me a woman who looks at masturbating as cheating. You show me a woman who freaks out because a guy's got a Playboy under the mattress and thinks uh, he loves that magazine more than me, or he's cheating with the magazine. I'm going to show you someone who's got some issues. And these are the same issues that translate into once a week instead mm-hmm. of three times a week at mm-hmm. 18 or 19. Look into those issues. You'll find your answer. Don't argue over the masturbation. All right. Nakaya? Nakaya? Hey. How do you pronounce oh. your name? Natalia. Natalia. Yes. Wait. Spell it. Oh, hey. I I'm just so excited to talk to Adam. And it's Christine Pina is there. Thank you. How do you spell <laughs> how do you spell your name? N A T A Y A. Natalia. Natalia. It's a pretty name. That's what I want to name my daughters, but that's not my real name. But you know you y'all should know that anyway. Yeah. Hello, Drew. Hi Natalia. What's up, baby? Hey, um, I was gonna ask Drew a question right quick. Um, when I have sex with my fiance, um, Sex is going great, but it's like in a certain position downward towards my anal. Then, then my my clitoris says, your grandma says or whatever. <laughs> That's what we call it. Well, she says it, clitoris. Clitoris, yeah. yeah. We say clitoris. That's right. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. Sorry, grandma. No, what's we call it? Um, it uh, like it burns, but it, it, it's very uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like it, like and, it's sort of chapped and chafing. Actually, yeah, like it's like a little, little bitty cut, a like sore, maybe yeah. three or four little cut, little bitty ones, you yeah. know. It's like a like a little sting kind this of thing. This is every you know? time you have this. Um, yes, and I I have frequent sex with him like about four times a week, and yeah. Why don't you let him? Why don't you take some hot baths and lay off for about a week and see if that doesn't heal up? Maybe you put a put a little cortate on there. Oh, is this uh, Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana? Excuse me. Okay. Timely no, at all. All right, baby. What's your nationality? I'm an Hispanic. Oh, all right. Good times, you know. Yes, I have a black man with me. Yeah, takes all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you another question real quick? Sure. Yeah. Um, He also has, a, what's going call it, a cut on his penis. Uh-oh. You know, and I, I I really need to know this because like a year ago I had a abnormal pap smear. Yeah. And I was scared of my what I might, you know, I was scared of my what I was going to, you know, the answer. So I didn't go. And oh, my God. No, listen, Natalia, this, you, this could now have progressed to cancer. You've got to go. And this cut on his penis could be herpes, frankly. And you're getting kind of a little herpetic type thing going there, it sounds like. Somebody needs to look at that, make sure it's not herpes, and you've got to get that cancer taken out. And I'm yeah. saying it that way to impress upon you that abnormal cells become cancer. Well, now, if she's, you don't, now if, she's really not and going. And if you don't take them out, you die. That young women die of cervical cancer. And you think the, the, um, the symptoms I'm having, you think that might be I have fine. nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. You had an abnormal pap and you didn't follow up properly. Hopefully it's not a big deal, but you've got it to follow up. And they will see whether or not that little area where the, where the, at the bottom of the vagina is called the fourchette. Oh, yeah. You know like that? Yeah. And uh, we'll see whether that is herpes or not. But somebody needs to look at that. And you think um, I could have gave something to him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, he, listen, listen. He has a cut. All right. Hey, hey baby. I'm, I'm shaking. Yeah, listen, why don't you shake that vagina right over to the gynecologist's office and let him have a look-see, you goofball. We can't tell you anything for sure. You don't have any kids, do you? Oh, no. I don't believe no. that. I don't think I can have kids. Good. I bet you can. I, can. I bet I can, but no. I don't want to. 
Listen, you... I've been through a lot of stuff. Yeah, use protection. Do you hear me? Yeah. No, you're not using birth control. I, I'm really not. Oh. I know. Use birth not, control. I'm, I'm, you got to see the doctor tomorrow, first thing, promise me. You can get pregnant. Do you hear me? No, no, yeah. you will get pregnant. All right, go to the gynecologist, all right? Just any doctor. Please see a doctor. All right. Pelvic what, exam. What year are we living in here? What, what, what did she, did she call from, like, uh, the deep south, uh, turn of the century? Yeah. What, what decade? What, uh, what it's century it's did amazing, she call from? amazing how common that all is. Really? Oh, yes. Let me tell you something. You have an abnormal pap smear, and then you don't come back because you don't want to hear the answer? Yeah. That ain't great thinking. No. That's why, if I'm a gynecologist, I tag my patients. Caribou? Like a caribou. Yeah. I put a little yeah. homing or, beacon or, on their a ear. A whale or something? Yeah, someone... Well, not all of them. <laughs> but you get a you get a, a abnormal pap smear, and I look at you as uh, someone who, you know, like, like a, a felon that may run. Mm. I get that bounty out. Understand? I tag you up. Nice. And then I can uh, get my guys in their Jeep and track you down if I have to. Save you from yourself. You don't use the helicopters anymore? That's uh, too expensive. Yeah. Government cut back. Uh, Mikel? Yeah. You're, yeah? Yeah. I'm, this is Mikel. Okay. What's going on? <laughs> You're 18. Yeah. Um, my question for you guys was, um, my dad right now is on dialysis. Mm. And um, he's still drinking and smoking and doing like all the things that he's not supposed to do eating all the wrong foods and stuff like that wow and totally i'm not dealing with it very well at all and like i'm trying to like tell him you know no you can't do that and mm. trying to get him to stop and he's not have you told him that you don't want to lose your father yeah, yeah. like i was like don't you care at all you know don't you care about seeing your kids grow up because nah, don't you care about how i feel well i said that too okay I, well, how about talking to his doctors oh i'm so nervous. He's been on dialysis for a year. Why would it be nerve? Why would you be nervous about talking to his doctors? Well, because I don't want him to like stop their, his treatment or something. You know? No, they're not going to stop his treatment. You you need to help them. <laughs> It'd be ironic if they killed him though, because you ratted him out. <laughs> no, you need to help them do his jo their job. They they're used to doc patients being non-compliant. That's a common thing. Now, wh what Shouldn't is? They wh know. They probably do know, but you, they need family to help them do their job. They need, they need to follow do, them home. Yeah, you need, they need to communicate. They need to hear what's going on. They need to, you need to hear what they've got to say. Ways that you can help them, help him. All right, let, let me t let me ask about this dialysis. Is ki that says kidneys aren't functioning? Right. Yeah, because he was an alcoholic. Well, oh, so he has end stage liver disease. Right, and he well tons. He has tons of problems. High blood pressure and yeah. well, what what blew the kidneys? High, high blood pressure or, or liver it disease? It was high blood pressure. Okay. All right. So the kidneys stop functioning or don't function at all. What at all. Is, is when you're on dialysis? Is it because your kidneys aren't functioning at all, or because they're it functioning at twenty percent? No, essential. I mean, there is a tiny amount of urine produced, but it's essentially it, consider it not at all. Now, what do your kidneys do? I mean, they filter the blood. So the blood they take out nitrogenous waste, manage. Acid base, fluid and electrolytes. And then fluid. That, that comes out in the form of urine? Balanced urine, yeah. Right. What about the uh, Duke? Duke is a different system. No kidneys. Kidney, no. just urine. Just urine. And uh, it's a filter. And when that closes down, obviously start, there's trouble. You can't get rid of fluid. You start accumulating fluid. You can get sodium. You're so at, you're, you get acidotic. Acid builds up in your system. I mean, it's tons of things. So you go on dialysis. And it filters it out. Do you go once a week, once usually, a day? Usually three times a week. Yeah, he goes three times a week for like eight hours. Now, does he's on it for eight yeah, hours. Not, it's, like, like, it's like two, three hours. You sit in the chair. Yeah. Now, right. does does he feel as if he has to urinate? No. No, it's a, blood comes in. It's, it's a... No, I know. I know. I know that. I mean... Like, the marks on his arm would be like similar to like... I don't know, like tracks when a hair went out of it. Yeah, yeah. They put the I, uh, no, I understand that, but what I mean is, is, is he not urinating, or he's urinating the same amount of fluid? It's just not being filtered. There is such a thing as that, but mostly people do not urinate. Or they a do few, not urinate. Few CCs a day. That's it. Would you feel as if you had to no, urinate? There's, there's no urine coming down the pike. Nothing being produced. It's all, and whatever might have been produced is being now taken out by the dialysis. Right. Now, aren't they coming out with, like, home dialysis things and All stuff? Stuff you can bring home with you? I'm sure. But you got to stop the smoking, the boozing, and the bad food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boozing, the food is the main thing. Why the food? 
Because again, it's the fluid meta- fluid balance. You got to be able to balance what goes in because things can get out of line really easily. Like a special diet, sodium, and potassium get out of line. Yeah. All right. Oh boy, <laughs> this poor chick's like been a nurse or a drunken dad her whole life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what that's the problem here. Mikhail, please don't hook up with some alcoholic dude you're taking care of right. uh, well, after that, your dad that, goes. That's why I want her to hook up with the doctors because she cannot take care of him. She's so invested in being the one that takes care of him is going to save his life. No, no, no. She needs to go to Al-Anon. She needs to let go. She needs to let, uh, work with the doctors. All right. Angel? Yes. What's up? Um, I have a, a problem where I can pick up on people's thoughts. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I've had it since I was a little kid. I just never understood what it was. Just till now I'm realizing what it is. Do you hear voices? I, I hear voices in my head. I couldn't make what it was of it since I was a little boy and... Now I'm realizing that it's people's thoughts that I pick up on. Yeah, I'm picking up on some stuff, too. Like, uh, if you work at a stereo store or something, what's going on back there? Excuse me? What's going on in the background? Well, actually, it's a factory. So, um, so there's a lot of noise. Is, is wow. there is there a phone you could get to that isn't quite as loud? I'm on a pay phone because uh, we're not allowed to make calls from our, our work phone. I see. All right, and um, can you can you tell what I'm thinking right now? Oh, it ha- it's people around me. I always pick up on their thoughts, and I've I've been in trouble where people have had problems with me, and I've picked up on their thoughts, and I've been right. And <laughs> uh, before people tell me what's going on, I already knew because I, I've for some reason I picked up on their thoughts. Yeah, but a lot of p- people can do that. Like yeah. I've always known, like. When I've gotten fired from a job and the boss called me in, I had a pretty good idea what he was thinking. Yeah, and understanding what people are thinking is different than actually hearing voices. No, I mean, it's like... And hearing voices... I hear voices in my head. I don't know, but hearing voices is a serious medical problem. Okay. Right. I've, I mean, I've seen a psychologist before so okay. when I was younger. All right. And um, I, I don't think I had a problem with that. I mean, I don't think I have a mental problem. It's just... Well, if you're hearing voices, you do. I, your, your brain is not working right if you're hearing voices. Do you think I have mental problems? If you're hearing voices, that is an absolute sign of problems. Okay. It's, the, it's like the smallest, like those thoughts that I don't pick, the thoughts that I don't listen to in my head are those thoughts that I could hear people because I've caught people in the act of doing something wrong to me and mm-hmm. I haven't caught them before. Yeah, okay. Like who did something wrong to you? No, they were they were gonna do something to my car. But do you ever think do you ever think the TV or the radio is speaking directly to you? No, no, I don't have those type of problems. I don't think I'm insane or something. I mean, no. it's just something that has I've realized. Now I've really came to realize that I have that, and I I can pick up on people's thoughts. I really can't pick up. You on mean you're intuitive thoughts. and you understand sort of you you pick up on what people are thinking just by looking at really? them. The really, really, really slightest voices in my head that I could really pick up, but I can't actually pick up. All right, listen, uh, Angel. Right. Um, you could be schizophrenic, or at least mildly schizophrenic. If you're hearing voices. You understand? Right. And it, and it comes on to guys that are your age. Right. So you got to get back to the psychiatrist slash psychologist. Get treatment. And uh, see what's going on. That's it. Unless <laughs> you work in a factory that... Uh, Guys on the uh, squawk box all day long. You, you're stuffed in between a bunch of people. Hey, you, you, lots of thoughts going on. Good times. Let me ask you. Let me let me just make this proclamation on here, Drew. Whenever, and this is my entire life, I've been uh, presented with somebody, whether it be a phone call or in person, where somebody can read minds or yeah. thoughts. Is it? Does it ever pay off? No. <laughs> does it ever pay off? You know what I mean? Yeah. I talk to the dead. I can see the future. I can hear what people are thinking. Okay, what am I thinking? Well, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, does it ever, is there ever, do they ever give you a straight answer? Do they ever, you know, the people who can see the future? I, I had one. Uh, Why don't you go down to the track and win yourself some money? Well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, when, I know. When, when Kennedy, I had that pilot. They had you know, Kennedy likes this kind of stuff. And, uh. Yeah, had, because she's a uh, hypochondriac. Yeah, and so we had this sort of clairvoyant person, but she was seeing angels or something. And uh, mm. and she goes, congratulations on your show. And I go, uh, well, it's just a pilot now. She goes, no, it's a show. Uh, no, no, it isn't. <laughs> no, it's no. a pilot. Yeah. No. And uh, you know if you went back and talked to her, she'd go, well, I, I saw that you'd be on a show. And, oh, Mars, you're on a show, Mars Venus, see? You're on a show. Yeah. I told you the show. 
Yeah, we had a uh, clairvoyant chick up here on uh, Valentine's Day. Was it or Halloween? When the hell was that? Valentine's, I think. Just a few weeks back. Drew was uh, magically uh, had disappeared. That's his, that's his powers. Wasn't that with uh, Michael Jackson? <laughs> I don't know who you're, yeah. what big celebrity, what A-list celebrity you were with, but you certainly weren't with uh, B slash C. Corolla. Yours truly <laughs> over here. But the point is, is let, let me tell you uh, how these people work. A uh, couple of things she did, and I noticed it, it, it's a con game. And if they believe it, then they're nuts. I'm not saying I'm not calling them liars because some of them are crazy. But they do stuff like this. I was telling Anderson about this. I don't think I talked about it on the air. She, uh, I said to her jokingly at the top of the show, "Yeah, hey, maybe I haven't had too much tragedy in my life, but uh, maybe we'll contact uh, my cat Norman who passed away." And later on in the show, just during the commercial, about an hour later, she said. Um, Who's Norman? <laughs> and I said, uh, you mean Norman the cat? No, not Norman the cat. There's another Norman in your life, an important Norman, maybe growing up, uncle, grandpa. I'm getting a Norman. You're very strong. I'm hearing the voice of Norman. And I said, uh, no, just a cat. And she said, yeah, no, not the cat. Not talking about Norman the cat that you grew up with, but another Norman in life. Well, she's doing the math. She's playing yeah. the odds. Yeah, you, you named a cat. Who the Norman? hell has a cat? Who, who, what what seven-year-old has a cat named Norman who didn't name it after their grandfather or some uncle, uncle that yeah. died in the war yeah. or some family friend? Who in the hell would name their cat Norman? Yeah. Well, let me tell you who. My sister, for no reason. And I said to her, I never met, uh, I don't know a Norman, and I never did. And there was no one in my family. Norman uh, Feld. From uh, he was the original Mr. Roper on uh, <laughs> on Three's Company. That's his, that's the closest Norman in my life. And she's like, no, there's a Norman. I said, no, d d drop it. You're going the wrong. You're playing a hunch. I mean, you're playing an angle, not a hunch. Smart, eighty percent, didn't pay off. Then uh, later on, she started with the. She said to me uh, during another commercial. So, what do you? You know what they do? They talk to you conversationally as if it's sort of nothing, and then later bring it up. She said, hey, you're very, you're very funny. You do some writing. I said, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do some writing. And so later on in the show, she was like, "You've got there's a project. There's some project, some project you've been peddling around. It just fell through. Some TV project just fell through." Well, again, she's playing the odds. She yeah. figures I'm a TV, I'm a writer, I'm a struggling writer, a budding writer. I'm out pitching ideas, out trying to get meetings all day and had some sitcom or some spec script or something that fell through. What she doesn't know is I don't write those scripts. I work on the man show all day and I nothing, nothing could be nothing, further nothing, from the truth. Nothing could fall through. She said something fell through. I said, no, no, it didn't. I'm, I'm just starting on 26 man shows. You think about it. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not going to think about it. She said, uh, she said uh, I said, nothing fell through. She said, that's your opinion. <laughs> I said, uh, that's, hey. And then uh, this, is when, this is when you, you're glad you weren't here because you got a little uncomfortable. I said, no, that's not my opinion. That's the truth. If yeah. I, you tell me the earth is uh, flat and I tell you it's round, it ain't my opinion. Don't pass that off that way. That's the truth, and I'm telling you nothing fell through. But again, they talk to you. They get little bits and pieces. This guy's a writer. He had a cat named Norman. But they also they use, they, play the odds. They use the plasticity of your own thinking. Like, if you think about it, you'll figure out what I mean. Well, yeah. of course you can make meaning out of almost anything anybody right. says. I, uh, I see a vowel. <laughs> you uh, know someone with a vowel in their name? You think about it. You think? Yeah, I mean, she would say, like, the initials J and A. Does that mean anything? I say, no. Think about it. I, I don't know anybody. What's it mean? No. <laughs> okay, you think about it. You haven't thought of it. Now it's your fault. It's like, <laughs> I'm an idiot. All right. We will take ourselves a little break. When we come back, speak to Tanya. She used a vibrator a month ago. Been bleeding ever since. I think she just put it in her side. <laughs> All right. We'll see. After this. Hey! Yeah! Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That'd be Dr. Drew. Cisco's coming in here. Just, <laughs> Any minute now. Just a couple of shakes of a lamb's tail. Cisco should be uh, sliding in out. the studio anytime now. <laughs> so uh, until Cisco rolls in here, let's just uh, should we take a call or do you want to risk it? Anne, I think, has got something to say. <laughs> Anne? Anne? Well, conveniently, the publicist has the phone turned off. 
Oh, that's interesting. I see. There you go. Hmm. I think I think somehow it'll be your fault that that he you know he knew he was supposed to be here. Remember them wanting to be picked up at five thirty and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cisco's there's not some, here. Something in that piece of it that's going to come out. Well, I'll tell you, do you want to take a chance and go to the phones, or you just want to wait it out? I mean, I don't want to get into a call and have him walk in. Just wait a couple minutes. Just wait a couple beats? <laughs> wait, I think I heard something. No. All right. Nothing. Let's go. All right, let's go. You want to give it a few more beats? What do you think? Well, let's just take a quick call. Okay. Right. Okay? Yeah. And if he comes in, we'll just put her on hold? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll just hang up. Oh, we'll just hang up. Yeah. Okay. Well, real fast. Tanya? Yes. Let's get that question before Cisco comes bounding into the studio. All right. About a month ago, my husband purchased a vibrator. Uh -huh. And I've purchased never used one, one before. Mm. <laughs> and so, anyway, we used it. And ever since then, I've been bleeding. And I don't understand why. What did you do with this thing? Not bleeding from the gums or the vagina? The vagina. I see. Are you, are you having any pelvic pain? No. Well, maybe a little bit, like I'm a little bit bloated. Mm -hmm. Are you on new medication, birth control pills, anything like that? No, I've had my tubes tied, and I do have um, an ovary that is enlarged. That was my last, um, my doctor's appointment that I went to last month. That's what he said. Well, mm -hmm. so we'll just keep an eye on it, but I don't understand why I would still be bleeding after a month. It's well, almost like I can't really tell when my period's going to come on now. Has it stopped and started and stopped and started or been bleeding continuously the entire time? Um, it's been, um, like the first two weeks, it was a, a gush of blood, but now it's kind of like a real light orange tint. But it continues. Well, maybe that enlarged ovary is a cyst, and maybe the cyst is causing some instability in the lining of the uterus, and that's that. Uh, you do need to go back and follow with your doctor. I can virtually guarantee you this has nothing to do with the vibrator. I guess there's a potential there being some infection maybe introduced by that, but really remote. Okay. So go back and check out what's going on here. Thank you very much. Yeah, did, you, he, did he wipe the thing down before he used it on you? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He's that, really good about that kind of those thing. Those things are touched by thousands of Asians before they get to your vagina. Oh, God. Don't you understand that? that? You were just in a factory, right? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, Asian children. No, don't tell me yes. that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, no, wait. You were in a, f a factory in North Hollywood or something, right? Oh, yes. No, no. <laughs> no, no, Tanya. Listen, Adam's done a little research here recently. People do hey, that. Yeah. We're from Kansas, so... <laughs> Try to joke about that one. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not in you're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. I'm not saying Drew is not saying that you were at a vibrator factory. No, he was saying that I was at a vibrator factory. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I was. How was that? Good times. Is it like when you're a kid and you go to the bakery and when you leave they give you some baked goods to take home with you? They did actually give us a uh, nope. a, a fun pack, <laughs> and they do <laughs> a little a little tote, a stocking stuffer for the kids. <laughs> And, uh, they, you know, this place invented something called uh, virtual skin. Oh, my God. It basically feels like a person. Oh, my God. And let me tell you something, folks. Uh, you think your choice is between uh, butt plugs, vibrators, and dildos? Oh, no. You have not begun to scratch the surface. I mean, I mean there are Technology literally... Technology is really uh, taking over here, huh? Hundreds of different devices. Hundreds. Why so many? It seems like it's a pretty simple. But just think issue. about think about free market enterprise and the United States just and crazy. entrepreneurism and all that. You know what I mean? It just keeps going. But why is it's it all going? Under, it's all under one roof. It's one factory. It's, it's, it's inflatable dolls. It's stuff that's like one probes up your ass, the other one's up your hooch. You know. <sighs> I mean, it is just, just stuff you add water to, stuff, you know, that is like a ticklers on it. I, I, it, it just, it's just stuff that will hook in your car, you know, hook on your car battery. And st I mean, it just, it, 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 there are so many devices. And because technology is at a point where they can take this stuff and, you know, shrink it down now, it's a, it works. I mean, they have this, like... This is a sort of realistic feeling skin thing they gave me. It's basically you just put your Johnson into it. And it's like a rock tumbler for your dork. You just plug your penis right into this thing. It's just like turning and pulsating. Oh, it's and it's like <laughs> stuff's got like fluid in it. And it's like pumps and God. I mean it's crazy. Oh, and I mean those porn stars who are in there who have the real representations of their anatomy. I mean, I talked to the guy who plugged the anus. 
plugged it? Well, it's like when they pour the, you know, when they make a mold of your ass and vagina. Oh, no. They got to plug up that anus. They mean and they, and they, they got to plug up the vagina, too, or you're but, but plug it, with... You mean seal over. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, I mean, get a plug mold, it. mold of the inside. Well, you got to plug it so the stuff yeah. doesn't yeah. run in there. I see. And? They put a straw in your ass so you can breathe. And what did this guy say? <laughs> he liked this job. <laughs> oh, my God. Is he like some six-year-old? Uh, it was funny. The guy, the guy, guy. It was, no, it was like a young Mex. It was like a middle-aged Mexican guy. I mean, look, he came off a ranch, and I remember saying to the guy, "I said, listen, can't they just plug their own anus?" And he's like, "Well, I suppose," but then I couldn't do it. <laughs> I started laughing. I was like, "All right." Oh, yeah, yes. you, you make a pretty good point there. Yeah, good times. Yeah, good times. Oh my God. It, it, it is it is a surreal experience. It's all uh, probably illegal aliens. You know, it's just it looks like a sweatshop, right? It's just all Hispanic workers, and it's just women handling piles of butt plugs, and just it, they might as well be working on handlebar grips at a motorcycle factory. You know what I mean? It's it's that kind of thing. And no one's laughing. It's just big piles of vibrators and butt plugs. You know, so your job is to sew hair under the fake vagina. <laughs> Imagine. I, I mean, I am not exaggerating. There were 200 different separate items and crazy, crazy. It's like. Well, imagine if this, you actually let in what you were handling. You, you, you'd never start. You'd laugh so hard you'd, you'd pee. You just wouldn't be able to stand it's it. It's like this vagina, this is Jenna Jameson's actual vagina. This hair on it is a simulated hair. The guy who ran the factory uh, originally started in the uh, aerospace industry. Oh, he must be it's a polymer chemist or something. Parents must be proud after sending him to MIT. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he he he, he was like, I, I go to I go to ch I, I I go to uh, the uh, Far East to uh, do research on this stuff every year. I looked at him. I said, What can't you write off? You know what I mean in your profession? S satin, Bangkok. Uh, uh, whorehouse for four hours. I'm writing that off. And it was like, what can't you write off? All right. Anyway, uh, bizarre and surreal. Mike? Hello? You're 25. Make it fast. This goes should be in any second now. Okay. Well, earlier today, uh, girlfriend and I uh, had sex, broke the condom, and I was wondering about the morning after pill, what kind of side effects they might have, things like that. And if we can get it... A little nausea? What, if you can get what? The morning after pill. Yeah, what about it? Uh, is there any side effects? Can we get it without a prescription? If we can, where? You can't get it without a prescription in California. Cannot? Cannot. There's uh, Any doctor can write you that prescription, and okay. even some would be willing to do it over the phone, I would suspect. How, how long do we have before? You have 72 hours. 72 hours. And in the first 24 hours, it has the highest probability of being effective. 48 uh -huh. hours, it's about... 70% or so, 60%, excuse me, and uh, I beg your pardon, 80%, and then about the day three, it's about 70%. Okay. Not in California. Uh, yeah, what no, are my no. options? That you go call you call a doctor and go to emergency center, whatever, get the damn pill, get the morning after pill. It's no, big, right. it's no big deal. The Preven tends to cause a little bit of nausea, the plan B, less so. Uh, all can cause a little bit of bleeding. It's no big deal. It's very safe. It acts by suppressing ovulation. If your girlfriend has already ovulated, for whatever reason, if chance has it that she's already released an egg, she's probably going to get pregnant. But if she hasn't, this pill will prevent that egg from being released, just like your birth control pill used normally. Yeah. It's, I'm still shocked and dismayed that they don't just have that in California over the counter. And uh, one more quick note on the uh, dildo factory. He said they can't ship them to uh, Alabama. You know, there's certain places in the south, I don't know, Kentucky, Alabama, places like that, some parts of Florida. They, they, it's illegal to ship them. I said, yeah, but you know, the thing that's ironic about that dildo is if it had an eight-round clip in it and fired a bullet, you probably then could ship it to Alabama. And he said, that's not a bad idea. Oh, <laughs> Good times. All right, we will uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Laura when we come back. No, Nicole, Nicole. Oh, we will? Okay, we'll talk to uh, Nicole. She was uh, raped and her family blames her for it. 
we'll get to that after this. <laughs> Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Waiting on Cisco to come into the studio. Should be here any second now. So we get those uh, questions lined up for Cisco. Anyone want to call the show? Got a question about uh, thongs or um, or thongs or something? You just call in and uh, talk to Cisco. I'm sure by the time you get online here, he'll be in the studio. Probably just uh, grab himself a cup of Joe before he heads in. Just gonna settle in. Want to risk uh, taking another call? Yeah. Just squeeze it in real fast? Quick, quick. Come on, come on. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You might want to. All right, in. here we go. Nicole? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. You were uh, raped? Yeah. Who raped you? My sister. It was her boyfriend at the time. How long ago? It was August 20, 20, August 25th, three days before my birthday. Two, my 18th birthday. 2000, yeah, okay. Yeah. And... I had just moved from Kentucky with my other sister to live with my other sister, thinking the situation, my living situation, would be much better because she gave me, like, freedom and stuff like that. You what was going on in the situation in which you left? It was like, she, my sister, she tried to be my mother, protect me all the time. She wouldn't let me go anywhere. I couldn't stand out of my friend's house. I had to be at, at home and every what was night. your relationship like with your mother? Um, I was the baby, and... She died when I was nine years old. Uh, what happened to her? She oh, was a drug addict. Okay. And All she right. had got a hold of some bad stuff. All right, we got the picture. Where, where's uh, Where's your dad? You'll excuse the expression, your father. He's a crackhead. Okay. And hopefully he's dead. That's how I feel Did like he it. sexually abuse you? I, we, he has 13 kids, and we don't know him. We know him, but we don't know him. Did no. any other males ever do anything no. bad to you? No. Growing up, like, right? They're all too protective. It was like I never had a life, so I was like the rebellious little girl, 14 years old, act sexually active and all the stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I went out and slept with a whole bunch of guys. I've only slept with three guys in my whole life. Yeah, and that's not bad. Right. Yeah, and that's not including the guy that raped me. Okay. That's, uh, that's two less than Drew, by the way. All right. Yeah, and it's like when I turned 16, I developed really fast from 16 to 18. I went from a C to a double D. Good times, baby. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and so they're like, she's all sexually active, she's a slut and all the stuff like that. Yeah. So and just so, because of the way you look, you're now being judged, huh? Yeah. And yeah. so I go live with my sister, and it's like, I'm, me and my nephews and nieces, we're all playful. I'm like a big old kid. They call me tomboy. Mm. So we're in the front room wrestling, and my sister's boyfriend, him and his cousins walks in, and we all start wrestling. And it was girl, it was my friends was there, and, and you know, I didn't think anything of it. So later on that night when the kids are in their room sleeping and my sister's at work, he starts pushing me around. And I thought it was playing, so you know, I started hitting them with pillows. And then he pushed me hard one time. And my sister had this little table in her house in the front room with these little chairs to it. And I hit my head on the back of it. And, like, when I woke back up, he was, like, on top of me. And I kept trying to scoop back or whatever. You were actually unconscious? Yeah. You need to go to the doctor. Do you understand that? Yeah, I've been getting migraines ever since. Oh, they won't. They, I don't have any insurance. I don't oh. even know how to drive. They won't do teach me anything. All right, mm -hmm. but, all right. Oh, Nicole, did you call the cops? I, the reason I didn't was because my sister is suicidal. She's tried to kill herself six mm -hmm. times in one year over this dude. Oh. Over this dude. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, who could lose all that? So I figured. All okay. right. I can just hold this in until I graduate and go away to college and just leave it like that. Are, that's are, actually kind of a good good uh, instinct. Are there. you going to graduate and go away to college? I have a 3.9 GPA. I'm valedictorian, and I graduate May 9th, and I'm going to Rhode Island, California, anywhere but Oklahoma or Texas. Oh, really? All right. Hold on. 3.9 is almost a 4. That's not very good. A 4? <laughs> that's out of 10, right? <laughs> no, the highest you can get is 4.0. Holy Christ! Yeah. Hey, did you did you take the uh, SATs? I don't have to. I'm going to college to be a chef. So they was like, you don't have to. You're already accepted. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going what? I'm going to college to be a pastry chef. Huh. Oh, really? Where in California would you go? You got to have a dream. Um, California Culinary Academy. Where is that? Um, I'm not for sure. I forgot. And then there's Johnson & Wales in Florida, Miami, Florida. All right. It in Providence, Rhode Island. All right, <laughs> All right be careful though. You're gonna be That's like nine. You'll be 900 pounds by the time you're 25. No, it's in Pasadena. It's Pastry right. chef. Well, see, the thing is, lately, it's like at first when it happened, I gained like a cup, like five, ten pounds. Yeah. But now it's like I don't think about it anymore, or nothing like that. And I'll drop like those pounds, and 
at nighttime when I do think about it, it makes me mad. So I just start doing exercises. So like, oh, this is great. All right. Well, listen, hey, Nicole. Oh, Nicole. Okay, listen. Your whole life has been a mess. But you know what? You got a good spirit to you, which is nice. Resilient. She's because resilient. you could really be a mess right now. You know? That's their problem. They're like, why didn't you tell anybody? Why didn't you cry? I see me like this. It's like my mom died when I was nine. My grandmother died when I was ten. Mm. Over those last few years, I've had like ten friends die from car accidents and stuff like that. Wow. And I'm like, I've cried too much to cry. I'm like, this is just one more thing that can happen. All mm. right. Listen, you go, you graduate, you pack your... Uh, yes. No, I was going to say your uh, pastry bag. Mm. That's the stuff they shoot the frosting out of. Yeah. 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 You have frosting bag and uh, head to California and uh, go uh, bake yourself up a storm and don't look back and don't have any kids for a while. And please. Please, and eventually get some counseling and all that kind of stuff, but just take care of yourself and get far away from that. Family. <laughs> and just ran out of the room. Is Cisco here? Oh, no. you got to be kidding me. you got to be kidding me. Melissa? Yes. You're 26. Yes. We're going to make it fast because I think Cisco's in. <laughs> Cisco's in the hizzy. No. 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 <laughs> False alarm. Could, could have been the ghost of Cisco is uh, here. Mel Melissa? Yes, move I'm fast. I'm here. You're, 20, you're, you're, uh, you're 26. Correct. What's going on? Yeah. I uh, haven't seen uh, Ann move that fast since the uh, plumber told, told her she was going to shut off the water to the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, my question to you is, um, I will not allow myself to have an orgasm. Good. Very good. Well, no, it's not good. It's oh. frustrating. I see. So why don't you go ahead and do it? Well, um, I don't know. And that's why I thought maybe you guys could tell me why. Have you ever had an orgasm? Yes. Did you start crying? Um, yes. It freaked me out. Mm -hmm. Did uh, somebody do something weird to you growing up? Um, I was molested. There, okay. well, there you go. Are. Well, that was record time. We got right to it. Yeah. Well, there you go. Good times. Why don't you go to some treatment, huh? Well, I've been through some, and it doesn't seem to help. How, how, many, how many years were you involved in treatment? Um, with what? With treatment? Yeah. For four years. Mm. Yeah. Touche there, Drew. Well, you're going to need more. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, and, and listen, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. Uh, it's treatment plus action. Yeah, you gotta, you got to change. Well, and I have. I mean, um, I'm married, and I have three children. And when I met my husband, I was a prude. I would go to bed with sweats on, a T-shirt. I mean, and he had to stay on the other side of the bed, and I had to stay on the other side. And now I can wear thong underwear and go to bed in a T-shirt or go to bed naked, and it's okay. But you lost the ability to have an orgasm? Yes. I just, he's the only person I've ever been able to have an orgasm with is my husband. Hmm. But now that I know that I can, I stop it. Okay, hmm. well. It's some kind of control. Are you angry about something? Huh? You angry about something with no. your husband? No, I'm scared. Of what? I, I don't know. Well, she's just scared. She's gonna, you know, the floodgates will open yeah. up and she'll have some kind of flashback. What? Uh, how long were you molested for? Um, on and off a lot. My uncle did it for to me. My mother's boyfriends. Yeah. It was a lot of people. A lot of people. Mom's dad have him. Yeah, well, not my hell. dad. My father never did anything to no. me. My mother's boyfriends yeah, and yeah, an uncle. No. Yeah, that's why she got rid of your dad. Yeah. And she got boyfriends. Your dad wasn't abusive enough. No, not at all. How, right. how does she know? Uh, you know? You know your grandfather? Yes. What did he do to your mom? Um, physically and mentally very abusive. Yeah. And sexually, is I he, promise. Is he dead? No, he's alive and I hate him. No, oh, it's too bad. I don't I, know. Maybe there's an opportunity here to really torture someone. Huh? I, I'd love just to put a, a knife in that guy's ear. I would, too. I really would. All right. Hey, Melissa. Yes. On behalf of uh, your uh, three children. Yes. And by the way, that's enough. Oh, I know. My husband got fixed. Oh, good. Uh, three children, get back into therapy. Okay. And start working because you, 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 they, they will pick up this vibe. It's what's going wrong with this country. Melissa sounded all right, but listen, three, this is a woman who's been, you know, severely traumatized who is going to have issues and needs to needs to deal with them on behalf of the children. All right. Drew? Break. No. You want to take one more? Okay, take two. All right. Kelsey? Kelsey? She's sleeping? She's been on hold for 12 minutes. It's late. Kelsey? Kelsey? 
Kelsa. Kelsa. Kelsa, yeah. All right, Kelsa. What's going on? We have one minute. Well, I'm really, like, super-duper fat-tested. I mean, I'm, like, fat as a board, and I'm almost 20, and I don't think there's anything that's going to happen. Like, they're not going to get any bigger. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if it would be safe to get implants. Like, I mean, if I'm super-duper fat-tested, I mean, like, literally. Okay, baby, come on. I got jack off later. <laughs> would it somehow... <laughs> what are doing to me? I mean, having a flat, ch flat chest add risk to the procedure in some way? Well, I'm just wondering if no. it will work. I mean, otherwise, yes, like, it, will, yes, it will work. And everything. I'm yes. a really attractive girl. Oh, yes, it will work. That's why women get those implants. But yeah. does the skin even stretch? Over yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they'll work it out. But hey, listen, uh, Kelsa. Yeah. Don't don't go bigger than uh, you know B cup. A B cup? Yeah. Don't step it up too much because you step up and it then it really looks weird. Looks like uh, you took a uh, couple of rice bowls and turned them over on your chest because your skin is tight and it's sort of flat. Not thick like uh, what was her name? Minka. Minka. <laughs> you know why I can accommodate large fake boob? My skin is thick. My dermatologist tell me, most women, their skin nine mil thick. My skin twenty seven mil. Is so thick it can hold up more. I put small car on chest, no problem. We take break. Thus she is. That's why I'm number one Asian big boob queen. There you go. Good time. All right. We'll be back here uh, tomorrow night. Let's just give it a couple seconds, see if Cisco comes by. Nothing? Want to check the parking lot real quick? Let's go. Maybe check we couldn't it. get in. All right. Let's check the parking lot for about 22 hours. Yeah. Good. All right. And, good call. And, uh, then we'll be back. So until next time, Adam Crow for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.